You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence. I'm Mike, and this is going to be a brand new pen from Franklin Kristoff. Uh, in full disclosure, I got this pen as a uh, as a loaner to review. Uh, it's been out for like two days, and I got it the day before it came out. So some of these are already on their way to their new homes, but uh, the next batch of these uh, pens ought to be available soon. Also, my wife Audrey is the nib doctor at Franklin Kristoff, so uh, she is employed there. I try not to let that color my reviews in any way. I've been a Franklin Kristoff fan since the Wayback Days, long before Audrey worked there. Uh, I just really like their stuff. So you get your pen in this very nice uh, suit fabric. Look at, look at how nice that is. Suit fabric zipper pouch, which you could put another pen in there if you don't mind them touching. Uh, and on the inside, very nice uh, soft material to protect your pen. Better than a clamshell box by leaps and bounds, I'd say. Here is the pen. This is the Franklin Kristoff Model 50 Grandees. Uh, and it's a big one. I don't have their other big pen, the Model 66, handy. Uh, I wish I did, but I don't have one of those. And um, it's uh, it's this is bigger. Not a huge amount bigger. I'd say the 66 probably comes up to about here uh, on this pen. But you know I've got big old hands. And this is, uh, this is a big hand. <laughs> big hand. This is a big pen. And uh, I, it fits my big hand pretty well, I'm going to say. So let's take a look at this pen. Let's do a little writing sample. I'll show it next to a bunch of other pens. And away we'll go. So let's get a little bit of a, a white backdrop here because uh, this, this pen is a little bit difficult to to see all the details for uh, because it's all black. Uh, you will definitely see a couple of things straight off and one at, the one at the bottom and one at the top. Let's start at the top of this pen. This pen is a dedicated desk pen. There is no clipped version available and you really can't put a clip on this pen. Uh, it would be kind of weird. It is definitely made to lay on your desk. And part of that flair is uh, that it will give you uh, a, a little bit of visual interest, but also B, it allows for these widened flat sides on two sides of this cap. So no matter which side you want to put it down on, it'll do that. The 66 had a flat side on the body and it did a fairly good job of keeping that pin from rolling away. But if it gets going, that one flat side isn't really going to stop it very well. These two flat sides have kept this one from rolling around on my desk so far. And my desk is not exactly level. No, just put it down, no problem. What if I start on a rolly edge? Yep, there you go. Uh, it wants to roll because my desk isn't level, but it doesn't want to roll too far. So good stuff, Model 50. Uh, what else? Also, you'll see the Franklin Kristoff logo there at the top of the cap. Right there. Oh, yeah, perfect lighting. Good job with the uh, the script F and then the uh, the four diamonds that are the Franklin Kristoff logo. Around the cap band or where there would be a cap band, can I, can I make these show up on video? There we go. There's the IPO, Initial Pen Offering uh, Inscription, the 50 below that. And then it says Franklin Kristoff uh, around the circumference there. And that's really all the adornment on this pen. You have the logo at the top. You have a little bit of stuff around the band. You have that IPO. And that's it. Now, down here at the bottom of the pen, you'll notice there is this sort of I don't actually know what to call this, kind of an indention, I guess. Uh, and I asked Scott what the deal was with this. I'm like, that's a really interesting thing. And I know that Scott puts a lot of thought into his pen designs. And I was curious about what the, what the purpose of that was. And he said, well, it really kind of does three things. One is it looks kind of neat. It gives a little bit of visual interest to the end of the pen so you don't just have a straight up baton in your hand the whole time. The other thing is that it takes off some weight because this is a long pen and you don't want a whole bunch of weight in the back. And so any weight reduction is good. And the third is, and I probably would have missed this this ring here at the end is actually wider than the barrel and I'll insert a photo here I will figure out how to photogra photo photograph this so that you can see it well but when you set this down in your desk this barrel doesn't actually touch the desk so you have it sits on this ring back here and it sits on the flat surface here and this part right here is suspended and that sort of keeps it from uh, from rolling away as well because there's just not as much surface there for it to roll on and uh, it's a that's a really interesting feature and it does I think I just shook my desk pretty vigorously. <laughs> you can see from the camera, it does work. This is a really good design for a desk pen. So well done, uh, I think. Then you take the cap off and you have uh, what looks like a fairly uh, uh, common sort of Franklin Kristoff section. You have a section here. The cap threads are at the bottom. This is sometimes a little bit polarizing. Some people don't like them here at the bottom near the nib. Actually, that's I prefer my... my um, 
uh, my threads there. These are those big bo uh, block threads. They're pretty comfortable to hold. And this uh, section is actually a little bit longer than the sections on other pens, even like the Model 2 and such like that. I was trying to, inter to interchange some sections. And this section is actually pretty big. As I have in my notes here, this is... Oh, I didn't do the weights. Whatever. It's pretty light. It's acrylic. Um, it is... Uh, where is it? 10 to 12 millimeters. So 10 here where it pinches and 12 millimeters up here near where it meets the barrel. And uh, that is a very comfortable, that is a very comfortable size for me. I like that width there on the section. A lot of people have been asking for Franklin Christophs with a wider section because uh, sometimes a wider section is easier to hold on to if you have hand pain or joint problems or things of that nature, or if you just have big old hands. I got these big old beef mitts and sometimes a wider pen just is easier to hold on to. Uh, this is a pretty long pen, so as you can see here, it does go well past the webbing of my hand. Now, the cutoff for me for a short pen is like here. Like if a pen doesn't make it like past the webbing of my hand, I am just going to be like, mm, that's going to be too short. But this one goes well beyond, and so I was worried that it would be a little bit overbalanced. It's not. It actually feels really nice. Uh, there's not really any weight back here at all. The converter is in this part of the pen, so that's all below the, the webbing of your hand. This is mostly space. Unless you eyedropper fill it, then you can just fill up this whole barrel with, with ink, and that would be a tremendous amount of ink. I actually don't know if they, uh, <laughs> if they measured how much that would be, but it would be a lot. So uh, you could do that. I'm not going to, especially with an opaque pen. If I had a clear one, one, maybe I would eyedropper like a like a antique glass or something like that but not with this one I don't think but anyway this uh, little notch out here seems to take off enough weight where it's just not it's not a problem this is long it doesn't bother me at all and we're kind of used to desk pens being long anyway so I don't think that's a problem at all it's good stuff all right let's take a look at this uh, next to a bunch of other pens do a little writing sample and then uh, I'll, I'll throw this uh, in at the end of the video so here are a bunch of reference pens. Uh, I kind of went wild on reference pens. I probably should just put a couple more down in here, but I just didn't do it. Uh, so this this pen, the 50 Grandis, doesn't even fit in the pen tray. Like, it doesn't. It's not going to fit in your pen case. This one lives on your desk. That's where it belongs. So starting down here at the small end, we have the Franklin Christoph 45, which is comically small when compared to the Grandis. <laughs> like, totally different uh, different sort of pen. Then we have the Twisby Eco, the uh, Lamy Safari here, or the All-Star. They're the same size. This is the Franklin Christoph Model 19, or the 1901, some people call it. This is the Model 20, the Model 31, the Model 3, the Model 2. And then we get into a Twisby VAC 700, which is a pretty long pen, but it has nothing on the Grandis. Then we have the uh, the Pilot Justice 95, the uh, Pilot Custom 823, which is a fairly long pen. Come on now. I want my clip stall face. There we go. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Curados, which a lot of people will comment on how long that one is when it's not, uh, when it is unclicked. And then this big old pen is a Ryan Krusak Model 16, the L16, the Legend 16, which is a pretty big pen. But the Grandis, Grandis is the boss of them all. Let's take off some caps and see what you'll be writing with. All right, I went ahead and posted the 45 because unless you have very small hands, you're probably not writing with that one unposted anyway. And uh, these don't have nibs in them, but they're about the same length as the uh, as the 75 here, or uh, the, uh, the 75, the uh, Twisby VAC 700. So uh, this again, 45 Eco Safari 1901 20 313202 uh, VAC 700 Justice 823 Curados. Uh, model 16 or uh, legend 16 and then uh still actually does fit in the tray though uh the grandis is still the longest pen in this tray so uh this is a lot of pen but being acrylic and having a bit of weight savings in the back uh doesn't feel heavy or overbalanced so definitely i think one that's worth checking out all right let me put a bunch of caps back on we'll do a little writing sample and that'll be it Okay, so here we have we have the Franklin Christoph model fifty Grandis. That's a that's how you spell it. I don't know why, it just is Grandis. This is a medium nib, medium number six Yovo nib. 
And you can get these in steel. This is a regular stainless steel one uh, in medium, no grind or anything like that. Uh, and uh, with this configuration, this pin goes for 175 right now on initial pin offering. And it'll go up to, I think, 200 or so uh, when that is over. Although I don't, I don't really know for sure what the final price of this pin is going to be. You can get these in 14K. You can get them in all kinds of grinds. And uh, all these nibs are checked over by their nib, or nib experts, chiefly my wife, Audrey, before they go out. So you know these are going to write really well. And uh, I think this pen is, uh, I think this one is definitely worth checking out. I think the looks are interesting. I think it works really well as a desk pen. And uh, I like the way it feels in my hand. It's got a nice long section, a little bit longer than some of the other pens uh, that they have done. And uh, I think it's got plenty of room for fingers and uh, writes beautifully. So check this out over at franklin-christoph.com. Uh, tell them I sent you if you go and grab one. And uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.